Well, hi everyone. Welcome to the second installment of our FUTO, FUTO guide to computing and privacy sovereignty. And so today we wanted to discuss ad blockers, right? So let's lay the ground for ad blockers. What, what are we dealing with? Um, why, why are there ads on the internet? Why do we need ad blockers? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, when, you know, you, you might have heard me talk before about, you know, I started at Yahoo in 97. They were in the midst of uh, changing um, software from something that you paid for. Like with Microsoft, you would pay for Microsoft Word. They were changing it into a model where they would give it to you for free. They would develop website for free or other things for free, and then they would put an ad on it. And it was it very quickly became all about collecting as much information as they could about you so that they could, um, you know, package you up and sell you to advertisers. So you became the product that app, that, that Yahoo was selling uh, to its customers, which were, you know, people advertising on the internet. So it's gotten even worse, you know, since I left Yahoo. We have Google now who is much more sophisticated in the way they use these ad networks. Um, and in the, it's not just getting you to buy, you know, a sugar soda or something now. It's um, getting you, they can change the way you vote even now. So it's, you know, causing a lot of problems. Um, and, but the good news is you don't have to deal with ads and you shouldn't deal with ads. Right, right, right. So before, you know, we get into the actual technicals of, you know, how, what ad blocker to pick and how they work, let's play the devil's advocate here a little bit, right? Because you know, the industry lobby would argue, it's like, well, you know, look at this incredible value that consumers have gotten over the past 20 years, everything for free, you know, from, from Gmail to Facebook to TikTok, you don't have to pay for anything. And yet, uh, you get all that, you don't have to pay for it. And yet you get it. And occasionally, you just have to watch some silly little ad. What's the problem with that? Right? What's what's the big problem? I mean, what, if you what? want, if you want to let them control you, sure. Like, uh, I think a lot of these companies will be happy are happy to control your behavior and have you waste your money on their stuff. Okay, but let, let's right. pick that apart a little bit. Like a lot of people might not be aware. It's not just watching an advert for sneakers, right? It's like, what's wrong with, you know, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll watch an ad for sneakers. But like the program and the surveillance is a bit more insidious than that. Like a lot more right. goes on than just selling you an ad. So right. you want to uh, dig into that. I mean, bit. you've know, heard of machine learning. It's basically they're learning how to, with the uh, through the ad network, through everything they collect through your behavior, clicking on ads, they are learning how to manipulate you. That's what machine learning is, is them learning how to manipulate you. If you like that, keep, wa keep, keep watching ads. But hopefully, you, hopefully, you know, there's enough people in this world who uh, wanna be free people who make their own decisions. Right, that's right, and that's why we're here. So let's, you know, so, so okay, suppose you wanna just filter out all or almost all adverts out of your day-to-day -day life, both on your desktop and as well as on your mobile, because most people, most people's lives these days is just like staring at this a phone screen, right? So, what options do we have? What's what's the um, what is an ad blocker and what's the kind of the easiest ones to uh, to install? Yeah, I mean the easiest ones that I use are just the, the browser add-on. So I use Chrome, to actually use regular Chrome, um, and I have uh, AdBlock Plus running on it. Mm -hmm. UBlock is also another good one. Um, and it's very simple. It just starts blocking ads as soon as you know, it takes about 20 seconds to install and it's running there on your browser. It loads the page, finds ads on it, makes sure it doesn't request anything for the ad. You can even strip them out. Um, for, for instance, on uh, Twitter, it will actually strip out. Twitter tries to force you to read all these things. It'll actually remove those from Twitter. Uh, it will actually take ads out of YouTube videos when you're watching YouTube. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yep. There's also the Brave browser, and it's got a ad blocker built in. Uh, I don't use it because it doesn't quite do what I want, but you, go ahead and try it. You might like it better. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think Brave's pretty cool. Uh, they, you know, they have this connection to cryptocurrency, which is a little, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, you can ignore that. Yeah, you can just ignore that. Uh, but there, there's a lot of movement, a lot of activity in, in the ad blocker space, which is kind of tightly connected to the sort of VPN space right. as well. Another way how you can have an ad blocker at a slightly deeper level, at a slightly more advanced, is basically, a, and this is not a VPN, you know, video. However, if if you're running a VPN, a lot of VPNs these days provide what's called a DNS-based ad blocker. In other words, they they block the the tr not just the ads themselves, but they completely block the 
tracking domains. In other words, all these little creepy little things that are sitting in your browser that you don't even know about that are tracking you, identifying you, profiling you. So your VPN can block all that. Um, but we also wanted to discuss for most people, they can just run ad blocker in their browser and you know, you're good and done forget about yeah, it. I, that's I, just, just forget about it, install it and you're done. Right. right? And that's what I do. Right. Yeah. And 99%, pretty much everyone, this is really what we would recommend. Right. Um, some of you that run VPNs, you can just turn on, I think it's usually called ad blocker or like remove tracking or, or tracking blocking. Same, same things for the, for the same thing. We certainly recommend turning that on and, and we're not going to recommend specific VPN providers, but, uh, for the, that's a can of worms and we can get into that some, some, some other time, right? Which VPN provider does Futo recommend? Uh, of course, run your own VPN, right? Would be the recommendation. It's a big can of worms. It's a big can of worms and we're not going to name names. Well, absolutely no names of VPNs on this podcast. Uh, but suppose you want to go a little more in depth and you want to run your own ad blocker. You want to know exactly what it's doing, right? In other words, suppose you don't trust the browser place plugin. You, you want to actually know which domains is it blocking? Why is it blocking? Which specifically? Yeah, da, 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 da. And for that, uh, there's an amazing, amazing open source. This is all open sourced uh, software. And we're going to share some of that. So let's have a look at that here. The system, uh, uh, the system's called Pi-hole. So the open source software is called Pi-hole which is, it's, it's kind of in the name. It's basically a bottomless black pit where all the tracking software falls into. Uh, you might wonder how does this actually work? Well, there's a nice little script that will install it for you. And then here's a shout out to the Mistborn guys. It's a script that will install all this. What it is, it's essentially, uh, and I think there's a nice little photo of it, how it works. Uh, yes, here we go. Super cool, right? So there's a server in the middle a computer that you control, right? And you can order, it, you can have this at home, you can have it at a, at a VPS provider. There's a computer in the middle that runs the Pi hole, right? And your devices, PC, tablet, laptop, mobile, whatever, connect to it. And then that thing connects to the broader internet. So essentially there's a computer sitting between you and the internet. And that computer is in charge of not letting bad things come through, or at least not the tracking domains. And this is uh, when you turn on the um, the Pi hole software, you know, you, once you connect in, okay, where's one of the menus? Uh, hang on, which one? Sorry, it is finally when you install it. Well, whatever, it's, it's here. This is what it looks like. This is my own uh, Pi hole uh, server that as you can see has over 1 million domains on the block list, right? And this is the cool thing when you get to customize this, you get to subscribe to different block lists. You want this flavor or you wanna, you wanna just uh, block all Google, all Facebook, all the tracking domains. Well, how about just blocking out all Apple domains? Cause you know, your MacBook just constantly talks to Apple and doing God knows what, right? So you get to pick and choose, you get to completely customize this. And then you get to watch on a minute by minute basis exactly which domains your computer on all your mobile devices too, and your family, if you so want to have has connected to how many of those queries were blocked? Well, I have a, you could say a million domains. That's pretty aggressive. Not much gets through, through that only things that I explicitly wanted to. So over ha close to half of all my traffic, internet traffic is completely blocked. I suspect a lot of that's Apple, right? And if that's too aggressive, then you can just log in and change the domains that get blocked and you can customize all that. And it's all very cool, right? But uh, one thing I recommend to everyone, even if you have your browser based ad blocker, a very neat way how to actually check if your ad blocker is running is to actually go to browserleaks.com slash proxy. And that tells you how are you doing on in terms of blocking, right? Because it runs a nice little JavaScript um, test on how you're doing on different kind of tracking methodologies. And then it give, it detects which ad blockers you're running, which is pretty neat. So we can see here, I'm running about 40, uh, eight general lists and 32 regional lists. So even if I'm in Albania or Bulgaria or watching internet in Slovenia or India or Korea, all those ads, because each country uses a different kind of slightly different format for that stu stupid little ads. 
So uh, this is a neat little test, no matter what methodology you're using, whether you're using VPN ad blocking, whether you're using um, your browser based or whether you're running your own pie hole, you can just go to browserleaks.com and, and see what's going on. So we most certainly uh, recommend ad blockers. Um, and so to conclude, how would you sort of address the criticism that like ad blockers take revenue away from content creators and oh the poor New York Times right. they gotta get away w w without my revenue or well, oh, poor YouTubers? I mean, first what, of what all, what do you say to that? News organizations deserve no uh, no concern at all okay. these days. But individual <laughs> journalists and yes. and YouTube creators, like look, I was a programmer who worked at uh, Yahoo and I wrote software that had ads put on it. I personally would have rather made less money and formed a more honest relationship with the people using my software where they were paying me for it. I have it on good authority that a lot of YouTube creators feel the same way. I mean, I, I would say, don't worry about it. Like if you really, if you really like a YouTube creator, use patronage, all the good YouTube YouTubers. Give them money direct. Yeah, give them money, buy their chair. Um, if they're selling a chair, right? Like PewDiePie will sell you a chair if you really like PewDiePie. Yeah, block, but you still block his ads. You don't want to feed the beast. You don't want to feed Google and encourage their bad behavior. So what would internet without ads look like? How would we, let's, let's paint the optimistic picture for the future. What's the, what's the year on internet without ads? I mean, I think we're already seeing it to, uh, to a large degree. With journalism, we have Substack where people are paying subs subscriptions to get content directly from journalists. Mm -hmm. So they're, hopefully they're quitting the New York Times and going to Substack. Um, for YouTube, we have many YouTube creators who are setting up patronage accounts. So you can Patreon or PayPal or whatever. You can pay your, your creator directly. I think in the, in the, you know, sponsorships do have a place in the world. So when a YouTuber makes a direct sponsorship, like with uh, PewDiePie's chair, um, and he... Does he really have chairs? Yes, PewDiePie will sell you his chair that he lays down flat on. Um, That's cool. Yeah. You should check that out. Yeah, yeah. So... All those things, you that's, that's the right way. Yeah, PewDiePie is great. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't watch him. Do you watch, watch Dr. Disrespect? You like never Dr. seen Disrespect? that one. Never it's seen great that gaming, one. like okay. eight-hour gaming sessions. It's cool shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I watch PewDiePie once every you know month or two. So. Ah, not, oh, not, sure. not regularly. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. So pay people direct. The internet isn't there to put big companies between you and your content. The internet is here for to connect you directly to the people who are making the content you you like. That's what it was an, intended to do. It's only an accident of, um, you know. Venture capital. Yeah, really. that, that, we, that we're in the current situation. Okay, well on that note, peace out and ad blockers rule and content creators rule and being paid directly. So yes. thanks all and see you at the next Fudo blog.